Hi again guys, and welcome to episode 75 of B-Road Ballers, the review series for Gran Turismo's Hot Hatches, and also to some degree, Sleeper Hatches. Now, Sleeper Hatches are, of course, kind of a sub-niche within the hatchback category in general, in a fairly similar vein to Sleeper Sedans, or Saloons. Now, this particular vehicle, I would say, definitely is one such Sleeper Hatchback. And the vehicle in question is the Volkswagen Lupo 1.4. Now, we've already discussed the Lupo GTI in this series, and that's actually one of my favourite hatchbacks on Gran Turismo. I think it's a great looking car, it's compact, it's light, it's fast, and it's fun. But what about this version? Because Volkswagen has a number of models, more so in fact than most of the other companies on the game, where you see both the normal and hot version featured. You've got the Lupo and the GTI for instance, the Beetle and then the Beetle RSI, the Golf 4 GTI, and then the much more extreme R32 and so on and so on. Now this particular vehicle is, I would say, an excellent example of a sleeper hatch because it offers very similar numbers to the GTI version and funnily enough in some ways it's actually better than the GTI version, but it offers it in a package that's much more understated, much more under the radar, and much less expected. So, in effect, the definition of a sleeper. Now, as far as the numbers that you do actually get, you're looking, first of all, at a price tag of just under 15,500 credits. So, it's pretty cheap. It's not the absolute cheapest of hatches, but it's definitely no way near what you would call a big investment. Now the engine is a 1.4 litre, it's front wheel drive as you'd probably assume, and you can turbocharge that engine up to 267 horsepower, 203 foot-pounds of torque, and in a vehicle that only weighs 815 kilos, that could potentially give you really strong performance. Because if you think about it, you're looking at the weight of something like a K car, but coupled to the power of something like a Seat Leon Cupra or a Ford Focus RS, without tuning of course. So overall, that's a pretty impressive package, at least on paper. So the question is, can it deliver on those numbers? Well, to some degree, I would say yes it can. Now, is it as good as the GTI version? Well, in some ways, I would actually say, yes, it is. The weight is, for instance, even lighter, the horsepower is very similar, the price is even lower, and the PP is also a similar kind of level at 483. The horsepower per tonne is also excellent at 328, and pretty much all of its numbers across its entire spec sheet are much better than you'd probably expect them to be. It's certainly not a vehicle which looks like it has a huge amount to offer. The GTI version obviously does look more eye-catching, more flashy, like it has more to do, more potential, but this car actually has almost the same potential, if not in some ways better, than the GTI. Now that being said, it's not necessarily faster than the GTI. Both cars are pretty well matched, and I would probably still give the edge to the GTI version in terms of sheer cornering ability, and also for the fun factor. The fact that this car can be made to be fast doesn't necessarily mean that it's adept at being fast. The GTI is designed to be a quicker model anyway, so it's already designed and developed in a slightly different way to cope with that increased performance. So, as such, when you tune a car that's already designed to be faster, it can cope with it a little bit better than just a bog-standard mainstream version. And to some degree, I would say that you can feel that difference between the 1.4 and the GTI. Now, does that make this an inferior vehicle or a bad car? No, definitely not. This is an excellent vehicle in its own way. Now, as far as pure lap times and straight-line performance, I haven't actually compared the two with fully-tuned states or around the same track or even over a drag distance, so I can't really say which one is definitively the faster. But, if you really care, they're not huge investments to try it out for yourself. As I said, it's only a 15 and a half grand car. But, I would say that the difference between this model and the GTI poses a very interesting option depending on what kind of driver and car collector 
you may be. Because when it comes to the Lupo, you've got really four options. You can either buy neither of them and go for something else completely. That's, of course, a valid option. They're not essential purchases, either of them, I would say. Option number two is you could buy the GTI version only. That's probably the way I would be more inclined, because overall I am more of a fan of the GTI version. Option number three is you could just buy this version. And that, I would say, is more for people who are fans of sleeper cars specifically. And there are certainly a good selection of sleeper cars on Gran Turismo, and this is a very, very good one. It offers a lot for the money. So that's a very valid option as well. And of course, option number four, which is the reality of the way that I am, is you'll probably just buy them both if you care that much. If you want to compare them, if you want to have both sides of the coin, then you may as well just fork out the money to have the 1.4 and the GTI. That's what I opted to do, primarily for the purpose of reviewing them, but were that not the case, I would have still bought the GTI because I like the car. Overall, I would definitely recommend checking out either of these cars if you fancy something different, especially in the much smaller hot hatch category. But overall, both Lupos are pretty amazing cars in their own way, and also the Cup cars are really nice as well, and we reviewed those, of course, in the GT Masters series. But that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.